You are listening to The Pilgrim on the 405 with Will Christ. Join him as he and his guests discover how businesses thrive in California. Well, welcome to The Pilgrim on the 405 on this beautiful day in Southern California. We have a great conversation coming up today with Errol Allen. He is a business process consultant who uh, first class from Houston, Texas. So, Errol, welcome to the Pilgrim on the 405. Thank you, Will. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here with y'all today. Super. Super. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, about how you got into process consulting. I um, When I decided to leave corporate America, Will, I asked myself, when were you having the most fun doing your corporate? Oh, work? I love to hear that. I love that. When were you? And it was, it, it, I mean, immediately it hit me um, when I was a operations analyst for a um, cable company. TCI Cable Vision was the company. Uh-huh. And so that's when I decided um, that's what I wanted to do. I was going to take that. I, I feel like it's my gift. I'm analytical by nature. And I felt like I could make a go of it. So that's how it came about. I just decided to focus on helping businesses to create consistency by documenting their process. And so I just struck out. I just left corporate America and I thought I was crazy. So let me ask you, I'm, I'm, I'm betting that you already are living the EOS life, Entrepreneurial Operating System. We have five things that we we want people to get to. And you just talked about the first one. The first one is you only do the things you love doing. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's what I heard you just say. We only work with people that we really enjoy working with. That's right. I mean, you wouldn't take on a client that you didn't, that you didn't enjoy working with or didn't fit your core values, something like that. Right. Those All right. Are, I, so we I only we only do what we own. What's that? I have some specific questions that I ask now. Of Great. Yep. We, we only work with people we love working with. We don't, I mean, we only do the things we love doing. Only work with people we enjoy working with. We make a great contribution and we know it. That's right. Yes, sir. Right. That's, that's right. We get we get compensated appropriately. Right. You don't do this for free, right? I don't. <laughs> I will, and then but finally, I number <laughs> number five, we have plenty of time for our family and our other passions. That's right. Got to know when to shut it oh, down. Right. That's right. You got it. That's amazing. That's right. Companies, companies work long and hard with me over a two-year period to get everybody in the organization to be living that life. And you are already there. That's great. So, so tell us about, tell us a couple of stories about companies where you have improved their processes and tell us how you did it, what, what the results were, and then how did the company feel about it afterward? Well, you know, I, I, for instance, there's, um, couple of buddies, I, they're my buddies now. They're, they're clients, but they're my buddies now, right? Um, they have a, um, oh, they sold it a couple of years ago now. They had a um, property management company, right? And they, at the time they had, they were managing maybe 325 doors. So when I, when I came on the scene, there was nothing documented so far as how they were doing things, right? They had like four, maybe three property managers at the time. And everybody was doing things a different way and nobody realized it. So we, <laughs> it, was, it was funny. Um, so we, we, we flow charted their processes first, the way they were doing things currently. And then we would get in this conference room and look at you know, what the flow chart was saying and then we, change what we needed to change. Okay, here's the way we're going to do it. So we went through that. I was with them like a year and a half. Um, we also put some metrics in place because they weren't measuring anything, you know, so far as, as how well things were running, what 
just things to point them to what to look at, right? To, to make things better. So long story short, they grew to a little over a thousand doors they were managing. And because we went through all of that, it made it easier for them to do. And then they eventually sold the company. And one of the um, partners wrote a book and he put me in the book. He didn't tell me he was going to do it. He didn't, <laughs> he, didn't tell me that. he didn't tell me that until he sent me a book. And I'm just sitting here reading the book. And he, he mentioned me in the book and he said there was no way that they would have been able to do what they did without me. And that almost made me cry, man. That's just, you know, it did. It, I had to put the book down and go outside. Will. It almost, it almost. Wow. Yeah. Well, it, it makes a big difference, doesn't it, when we've really made some significant contributions to companies. Yeah. That, that's the whole purpose of, of doing what I do is to, you know, the number one thing is I love it, right? The number mm-hmm. two thing is is to make situations better. That, that's all it is. Those are the two things for me. I love it, and it helps people's um, situation to be better than, than than where I found it. That's all. Well, and and and, and it, it it changes lives, right? I yes. mean, you got people in there who are confused. Uh, one thinks the other, you know, is doing it wrong. Some people think they got the best way. Uh, they don't communicate. They, they all these 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 uh, dysfunctional behaviors are there. And and when they can when they can get on the same page. Now have you downloaded my book, the Everybody on the Same Page? I have not, sir. I'm gonna make sure that you get one. Get a copy right. of Everyone on the Same Page. All right. All right. Uh, you know, when people are on the same page about their processes for one, then it's dysfunctional and, and it, it it has an uh, certainly has a, a major effect on the, the profit and loss of the business. But it also has a big impact on on people's relationships. Right, that's right. It it impacts your employee retention rate, right? Because people will get frustrated and leave you because things are not because the business is not well run. They'll leave out of frustration. So you find yourself starting over, starting over, starting over. Um, and then uh, another positive thing that comes from document your processes. You have a training tool now, right? So that when you do hire a new employee, now you can train them properly, right? They, they have something to refer to um, during the training process. So you, my, I've all, I always tell my clients, the longer you can keep an employee, the longer they can help you to keep a customer, right? If, if, mm-hmm. Because customer retention comes with employee retention. They go together. They do. Mm-hmm. And and I tell them you got to keep your people. You know, sometimes people will just leave you find a better opportunity. You will, if they leave, you want it to be a positive, right? You don't want it to be because they're not happy with your company. They're frustrated with your company. You so the longer you can keep them, the better it is for everybody concerned. Well, now now let me see if you if this makes sense. I have found in in my 25, 30 years working with businesses that the there's only two reasons that people leave. Now, they might tell you I'm going to make more money or whatever, but the really the two reasons are number one, they either didn't like their manager, didn't feel like their manager was looking out for them, mm-hmm. or they don't feel like there's a challenge anymore. Yeah, I, I, I see that. Where they they feel like maybe they've outgrown, you know, what, yeah. what they're doing. They've outgrown what their position is, and there's no other position for them. Right. Uh, those are the only two reasons. Now, that's pretty general, but but when it comes down to it, if your if if your manager, you know, I've heard a lot of people talk about managing millennials, and what it really came down to is you have to you have to not discount millennials. You have to listen to them. You don't have to give in everything, but you have to listen and bring them on board. But but that you know, you either have a manager who's just so intent on telling people what to do all the time, uh, and is not looking out for his, his the best interests of the people who are reporting to him. People are gonna leave when they get they get tired of that. Yep. Or you haven't really set out a uh, uh, a plan that un that where you understand what the employee wants and help them get there. 
Yeah, you 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 have to, especially with millennials, right? Because they will speak up more so than us baby boomers, right? You know, mm-hmm. us baby boomers will talk, you know, to respect people because of the position, or whatever. We don't make waves, and you know, I I'm a rebel. My dad my dad told me a long time ago I was a rebel. I don't have a problem speaking up at this <laughs> but in general, right? But millennials, millennials, they will speak their mind, right? They will let you know. Mm-hmm. Happy, they will let you know when you know they think something can be done better. So you you have to be willing to listen to them because they they'll get frustrated. Like you don't care, you don't care what I think, and they'll go somewhere else just based on that. So um, so yeah, that you I, I find people will leave when they don't feel appreciated, mm-hmm. take them for granted, or you your taskmaster. Um, and, and, and you handle them improperly, they'll get tired of that and leave. Unless it's somebody with low self-esteem. Uh, people, I've, I've mm-hmm. seen people with low self-esteem, they allow themselves to be beat up every day. You know, and they, well, I need a job, so they stay, right? They, but not understanding, yeah. you're, you're slowly killing yourself when you, when you, when you right. allow yourself in a situation. Right. All right. So, you know, also, it seems to me that that when you get clear about the process, that you've documented your processes. Now, you know, I'm not talking about a 700 page SOP manual. I'm talking about one or two, three pages per process. Right. A lot Mm -hmm. of bullets, but very, very simple. But you document your process, then you train them and monitor them so that you can successfully declare this process is followed by all. Everybody who touches the process follows it. Right. Right. Well, that's, that's why, ideal. That's why, well, that's why you include the people that touch the process and that are mm-hmm. impacted by the process in the development of the process. Right? Uh-huh. That way you already got them, right, when you do that. You know, it right. takes it longer, it takes more time to do it that way, but you have a much better outcome when you do it that way. So you, you, you win them when you include them in developing the process. Because yeah. if you don't do it, Will, this is what they'll say. And you 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 come up with something, you give it to them. This is how we're gonna do it. And they're looking at you like, you didn't ask me. <laughs> I do this every day. You didn't ask me. Do it my way. I'm not gonna do it your way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So But but when when my way becomes our way mm-hmm. and your way becomes our way, and we all agree on that is the best way to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got a wonderful world there. I mean, you're not going to be having to chase down and, and and make sure that everybody's doing it every day. You should check on it once in a while. And you should probably look at your processes, I don't know what, uh, ha- every half year, every year, and make sure that they're still the best and uh, most effective and efficient way to do it. At least once a year, I, I recommend you know people look at mm-hmm. at least once. But if, if you tie a metric to it, then you can, you can see – on a regular basis, how well things are going when you, when you, when you plug a uh-huh. metric. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And, and one of the things in EOS that I just find so valuable is that is that we want everybody in the organization to have at least one and maybe more, but at least one measurable that they're responsible for every week. Mm-hmm. And if you can tie that to a process, woof, then, then you're really getting a lot of bang for your buck. That's right. Yeah. 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 Because you, you, you're, you're, um, you have that visual on, on it on a regular basis, a you know, weekly basis. Uh-huh. You, you see how well this process is, is running. Yeah. So, so, so tell me, uh, tell me about another story about company that uh, uh, came in with, uh, you know, that you helped out with clarifying their processes. One, well, one of my most recent clients, right? Um, you know, things fall through the cracks, right? And when you when you're not fully connected, things fall through the cracks. And they had a lot of things falling through the cracks because there was no cross functional communication. Meaning, when somebody was finished with their part of the process, well, there there was no communication to the next person when they were supposed to pick it up and and do their part, right? And and then if there was some, then the person that was maybe receiving the communication, okay, it's your turn now. They weren't getting all the information that they needed to to do their part. So now they were having to go backwards, um, asking for things, looking for things, versus 
when you hand off, hand off in the manner that they need it and give them the information that they need so that they can just pick it up and run. So once once we put communication methods in place, whether it was by email or Slack or phone call, whichever one was the best for that particular situation, then we looked at, okay, what information does this person need to, to keep going? So when we did those two things, right, it just, it, it changed their world, right? There was one lady, she, she was just kind of jumping up and down, you know, you know, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, because now she didn't have to go backwards to go forward, right? So mm. that, that excites me when I can see it's little stuff, you know, the little bitty stuff that can change somebody's whole work life, you know, uh, and, and that's the fun part for me. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's wonderful. Now, I'm going to be talking with one of my clients this afternoon. I'm going to spend some time with them because, you know, they've got a manufacturing plant and they've got issues about throughput, you know, how, how quickly things are, are getting through. They got a, it's, it's not happening at the, the rate they want and their internal quality. And, and uh, you know, the, the question was, do we have the right person as the operations manager? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, my question is before we start thinking that we can repair this by replacing the operations manager, do we have the right processes? Does everybody understand the process? Do we have, uh, you know, do we see where, the throughput is getting slowed. Do we see where the issues about quality are being hit? And uh, is everybody following the process? Right, right, right. Where, where are, the, are, are there any delays? Where mm -hmm. are they? What's causing them? If, if you're having a quality issue with the product, what is it? In where, in where in the process is that happening, right? Um, I used to I used to be a machinist for a long time. I mean, I, uh -huh. I was yeah, was nineteen, right? There was this big all tool company here in Houston, Hughes Tool Company, right? Hughes Tool. Oh well, they, weren't they uh, weren't they oil field? Yeah, yeah. And I was a machinist and. So I understand that manufacturing, you know, process, right? We all have our things that we do that contribute to the industry, mm -hmm. right? And of course, being a machinist, you had to run in tolerance, right? You, you, your product has had to stay within certain tolerances, right? And uh -huh. there was a QC guy that came around every hour or so. He come every and he, hour. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Every hour he'd come around, and check your, you know, the product that you had already run. You know, he he he'd come out with his gauges and he you know what, but you know what, Will? I didn't care because I had my own gauge, right? Mm -hmm. I was self mm -hmm. a self QC and and yeah. my stuff was right. Usually when he came by, you know, a lot of machines that I ran, you, you might have a 20, 25 minute cut, right? So I'm sitting there, I'm just sitting there reading, right? reading a book, whatever, right? So when he would show up, I didn't care. I knew my stuff was good, right? So I tell people that, you know, in, in the manufacturing situations, if you're having quality issues with your product, um, where is the QC hap happening? And who's mm -hmm. doing it? You know, who's doing it? Mm -hmm. If the people that are Making the product or not QC in their own work, I would suggest do that. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a similar thing when we put together what we call the accountability chart, not an org chart, but an accountability chart mm -hmm. so that every seat, starting off with the leadership team, every seat has the five roles that that seat, that box is responsible for. And, and then it gets rolled out to the whole organization. Now, I, I believe that if a person knows exactly what they're responsible for doing, it's right back to your QC at the local level. If they know exactly what they're responsible for doing 
and when they're coming in for their quarterly conversation they're uh, about their job they come in they know that they've been doing or not doing it mm -hmm. and if they know they've been doing those five things mm -hmm. then they know they're coming out with an a right right right, right. because I, I guess I guess from a QC perspective, you would say they have been QCing their own performance all along. Exactly. Here, here's but you've got to be really clear about it, right? Here's what I say. If a person knows what they're being held accountable for and they've been trained how to do what they've been held accountable for, you usually won't have an issue, right? If, if you miss one of those, if you don't tell them what they're accountable for and you don't train them how to do what they're accountable for, you're going to have problems, right? Yes. So, and, and then I see a lot of gaps. It's the training part, right? The people not being thoroughly trained but held accountable. And, and I'm kind of like, it's not fair. It's not fair to that person that, to not train them properly. You know, how do you expect them to to meet the standard if if you don't train them properly? That's not fair. You, you create an unnecessary amount of tension and frustration for that employee, right? And then if they're... If, if they're dealing with the external customer, right, it shows up in their dealing with the external customer. If they have internal customers, it shows up in their dealings with the internal customer. Now you've got, just got chaos. You just got frustration everywhere. You have animosity between the partners. You know, I wish those people over there and such and such would do a better job. And you know, I, then I wouldn't have to do this over here when I, you, you eliminate all of that just by those two things, telling people what they're accountable for and making sure they know how to do it. What they're accountable. I see a well, lot I, of that. Not, not yeah, that. I mean, and, and when you tell them, you have to be very clear. Yeah. Yes. You have yes. to speak in a language that they understand. Yes, yes. We, we talk and, about making it simple. We, we talk about dumbing it down. Yes. And and that's not that's not to that's not to to say that people are dumb, but making it more complex. Or speaking in, in, in language that might be ambiguous does not help the process. Mm -hmm. So we always say, keep it simple. Less is more. As simple as we can possibly be. And that's, that's the first step that we have in, in helping people to solve these problems where they're hitting the ceiling is simplify. Simplify, yeah. simplify, simplify. And, 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 and after we simplify it, then, as we delegate it, we, but the, you know, we're delegating to somebody, we make it simple. We make sure they understand it. Mm -hmm. Then with you, we train people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, now, after we do that, we've, we've trusted them. We've delegated to them, but we're going to remember Ronald Reagan's trust, but verify. That's right. We got to monitor. And, mm -hmm. and that's not for us to, to be, Oh, you know, big brother. What that is, is giving them feedback on how they can do it better. That's right. That's right. You know, this is feedback. Uh, and, and to show them how they can take the responsibility for making it better themselves. Right. You, you, so. You, 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 here's what I say. Before you, you, you always want to make sure people comprehend what, what you have trained them on, right? Get them to demonstrate that they understand what they've been taught, you know, mm -hmm. get them, get them to show you that they understood. Right. And then you just do random checks. Right. Mm -hmm. But then also mm -hmm. tell my clients, make it a point at least once a month, once a quarter to go and spend time with the people as they actually do the job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you, 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 you do a couple of things when you do that, you score a lot of points. With, with your employees when you do that. You gain a lot of respect, right? And 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 you, you go in there not to critique. You're just going there to see what they go through to do that job, right? You're not going there to critique or criticize, none of that. You're just going to observe and see and, and then look for things that you can do as the manager or owner of the business to maybe remove some obstacles, right? Um, you know, and make notes and let them know, hey, you know what? Let's work on this right here. Because that seems to be holding you back a little bit. Let's see what we can do to, to, to help you. And, and, and then actually do the job yourself, right? <laughs> yes. That, that's, that, that creates a lot of fun. They don't expect you to do it as good as they do. 
right? Yeah. But once again, you gain a you you score a lot of points when you when you do that, man. You score you score a lot. Well, another story, another story. Okay. When, when I worked for Geico, right? Um, I was stationed at this location. It was it was at a salvage yard. Most of the cars that came in out there, they were either total losses or close to being total loss. So the guys that worked for this company that worked for the salvage yard, I got to be pretty close to them because I'd see them every day, right? And 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 they absolutely hated their boss, right? And I had talked to the boss. He didn't seem to be a bad guy, you know. He didn't. And I was like, why don't why don't they like him, right? So I asked him like, why don't y'all like? And 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 they all would say because you know the what he expects us to do is just crazy. It's like, oh, okay. So I talked to him one day. I said, hey man, you know what? I said I'm gonna challenge you to do something. He said, what's that, Errol? I said I challenge you to spend a day with you guys out here, man, in the yard. You know, doing what they do. He said, "Oh, it'll never happen. I'll never do that." I said, "Okay," and I left it alone. Will so like <laughs> the, the next, the very next week, I was I was doing my thing. These guys were doing their thing, and all of a sudden, one of the guys came to me. He said, "He said, Aaron, come and see this." And I, I'm like, "What?" So I, I followed him, and here was this. He was the boss, right? Actually doing their job, right? And 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 our eyes met and he started laughing and I started laughing. But after that, Will, everything changed. Everything. Yeah. He called yeah. me in his office. He said, man, when you first told me that, I thought to myself, Errol has lost his mind. I'm not going. He said, but then I thought about it. And he said, man, I learned so much just that one day out there. He said, now I got some work to do to make things better for my guys, you know. So, yeah. That that almost made me cry, Will, because I'm like, oh you know, yeah, like, come on, man, you know how easy that was. So yeah. so so it, I, I tell my clients, you know, spend spend some time with your people while they do the job. And, yeah, and, and yeah. Do a lot of yeah. Points well, and, and and also, you know, when we delegate to somebody, we expect them to be as good as or better than what we would do. On, on right. The, only if you taught them how to do it, right? Well, that's what we're expecting. We're expecting to do that. And and once they have gotten to that level, when we come out, we've not done this every day, mm-hmm. and we come out and, and we attempt to do it and make a mistake, that makes us human. That's right. That's right. And we relate at, at a whole different level. And, and that, to me, is how you build. Now, uh, not every business sees building community as important. I think it's essential that we are a community of people. We have a common vision. We are 100% on the same page, knowing where we're going, how we're going to get there. And there's something in it for everybody because we want to know what it is that you want. And and, and you're building a community. And, and in doing that, you're really changing people's lives, not only on, on at, at the work, at, at you know, when they come to work, but also – when they go home, they're going to be dealing with their families in a whole different way. That's right. That's right. And they're not going to get up the next morning hating to come to work. Oh. And what are they training? Their, what are they teaching their kids about work? Uh, right. You know, it's, it's a hateful, uh, onerous, uh, dis, dis, distasteful thing. Oh, my goodness. But when people really love doing what they're doing, what a difference. What a That's difference. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's just so much fun to watch um, things change. You know, I I, I tell my clients progress, right? Progress, Mm -hmm. progress. Don't 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 get frustrated that you're not where you think you should be. Measure the progress. Are we a lot better in this area this week than we were last week, right? Oh my goodness, this month versus last month. I try to keep them focused in those short blocks, right there. Yeah. Yeah, well, there, what, there's a, a, a Dan Sullivan, a, a coach in Toronto for a uh, you know, strategic coach, and a lot of people use him. And, and he's got a book called uh, uh, The Gap in the Game. Mm-hmm. The Gap in the Game. And he said, so many people will set out a goal, and it, it's sort of like, uh, you know, setting out a goal that's not very specific, and, and it's like the horizon. Every time you take a step, the, 
horizon gets further away. Mm -hmm. So that's one piece. You get really clear, specific, measurable about your goal. He said, then a lot of people take a look at how far it is between from where they are right now to where the goal is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's called the gap. And people feel really bad about that gap. Right. Oh my gosh, it's right. going to be so far away. That's so hard. Going to be so expensive. Take so much time. Oh, I don't know. If we'll ever get there. And he said, if you don't look at the gap, but look at the gain, look at where you were last week, last month, last quarter, last year. How far have you come? That's very motivating. You're looking at your agency, your ability, your possible, you know, what you've actually performed. That's what's important. And when you can do the same thing with the people that you're training to use these processes, mm -hmm. you're not looking at what perfection is and how far we got to go to do that, but you're looking at how far they've come. Right. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. I'll try to keep them focused right there. Progress. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll send you a copy of the gap and the gain. Okay. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's, it's and it, the, the way that Dan's writing these books, he's writing them every quarter and, and he's got a lot of cartoon figures. He's got a cartoon artist working with him and it's a short book, uh, but it's right to the point. It's, it's, okay. I'll, I'll send you a copy of it, but right. that's right. great. That's great. So, so uh, now what, what areas uh, need the most work in businesses for processes? What areas? Um, golly, you know, that's kind of hard to say. Um, you know, usually if you, you, you mentioned manufacturing a little bit ago, right? Mm -hmm. you, usually if it's a manufacturing situation, that manufacturing part is usually, they usually have a good handle on that for the most part. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. the back office stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Where, where you see little to no attention mm -hmm. um, as to how things are done, right? Um, so I would say, because when you say processes, most people think about manufacturing. That's what yeah. the first thing. Yeah. Right? But when you start thinking about your your back office stuff, your uh, your your administration, uh, your hiring process, your your performance review process. Um, just the day-to-day -day office stuff mm -hmm. is, is, mm -hmm. is where you 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 can where I see um, just the attention may be lacking a little bit in in, in relative mm -hmm. to a manufacturing type situation. It's it's usually the office stuff where it where you need some attention. Well, think about think about something as simple as marketing. Mm -hmm. Do we have a system mm -hmm. that is consistently introducing? people or us to each other who might want to might have problems that that we can help them solve do we have a system that is consistently successful and and if we don't can we find one can we create one can we go find somebody to help us and and, and then once we once we have that process then train people to use it and then monitor so that they're followed by all you know, with with uh with my clients, um, that's that's one of the areas we look at is is marketing. You know, generating leads, and then what happens when you get a lead? You know, what happens when you when the lead comes in? What happens? Um, mm -hmm. Specifically, what happens? You get a lead. Mm -hmm. What what happens? And then what happens? And then what happens? And mm -hmm. then what? Happens? Right. And when you when you get an appointment, sales, sales process. Yep. Sales process. Right. Yep. What yep. is our sales process? It's not go out and find, uh, you know, uh, great uh, cowboys who can shoot fast. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not that's not sales process. Mm -hmm. Let's find a sales process that works for us in our industry. And and, and then let's perfect that process so right. that it works every time. And, and then, then let's train people to use it. And then when you get a new client, what happens? How do you onboard? Yeah. Them? What's your yeah, onboard? Absolutely. Process? What is our process? Yep. Yeah. 
Well, and, and what is our proven process? And that's right. one of the things in EOS is we have a proven process. We yeah. know what we do every time. It's the same yeah. thing. It's yeah. as boring as it can be for an implementer yeah. in terms of this, the process, the system. What's exciting is all the fireworks that go around as people move into this process. And so you, you got you got marketing, you got sales, you got customer service. What do we do when we have a problem? Right. What about accounting? How do we collect the money? Right. What do we what what's our what's our our P and L look like? What pieces right. go into it? And where do we how do we how do we reward people? Right. All of those all of those things. When we have processes that work most effective, most efficient every time, and they're being followed by all, it becomes productive. It becomes profitable scalable and a lot more fun it does um i just i tell people you know you it's important to break all of that down right mm -hmm. and because when you do you create consistency every time we get a lead here's what happens right here, here's mm -hmm. what happens. every time we get a lead and then if the lead turns into an appointment right what happens right mm -hmm it every time right then you get a new client okay what happens when you get a new client right you do that every you do it every time every time every time and and everybody has a role you know your the handoffs from the salesperson to the person that's onboarding the 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 new client does that onboarding person have everything they need to onboard that person properly right does the salesperson know what the onboarding person needs in order to on has the salesperson ever spent time with the onboarding person to see what that on you know we and you create those relationships right because most people don't want to negatively impact people right they don't mm -hmm. so if, if, if you get them to spend time together so you can say you know what when 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 i get ready to onboard this new client here's what i need from you right and you just make that part of their route you, you just create a checklist right so the salesperson goes, I need, need this, I need this, I need that, I need this before I give this to that person, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then when it comes time for the the salesperson's performance review, make part of it, how do they impact their internal customers, right? So you go and talk oh, to yeah. their internal customers, right? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's part of the, the job, part of the you know, when we talked about those five roles, five responsibilities for each of those seats, uh, one of them is follow the process, right? Yep. yep. Follow yep. the process. And so in the accountability and in the, 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 the review, the quarterly conversation, what do we do? We, we ask them about how they're doing with the core values in the company, uh, how they're doing on their, their 90 day goals that they had to, you know, mm -hmm. to make a difference. And then how are they doing in their job? How, how are they doing in their process? Right. How are right. they doing with their process? Right. And how do we help you get better in that process? Right. If you're if you're on a scale of one to ten, you're at a ten, then you're doing just great. Right. You know, I, I tell people, go and talk to the internal customers. And they'll they'll mm -hmm. tell you. They'll tell you how well that person is doing and servicing them, right? And mm -hmm. you know, you make make the performance review. Um, where you you address internal service, right? Yeah. So you, you, you now, 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 let me ask you, you you're in Houston. Yes. Uh, I, are all your clients in Houston? No. I mean, how many so do how, I have? How, I don't have any here right now. Oh, all right. So where are your clients? Okay, right now let's see Alabama, New York, Missouri. Um, thinking home. Let me come back around in my head. Um, I have one in Dallas. Um, just finished up with one in California, San Francisco. Um, but right now, no, nobody in Houston, man. You know, which which is that's, that's fine with me. All right. So, how? What's your proven process then? I mean, what do you, do you fly out? Do you on Zoom? Do you uh, what? What do you do? Pre-COVID, what I would do is to start the project. I would I would fly to my client and stay there for a couple of days, right? To 
I, I like to meet people face to face so that, you know, not only my client, but their employees, they get to meet me, I get to meet them. We get to discuss the project. Here's, here's what we want to accomplish. Here's the steps that we're going to take. Here's what we need from all of you. You know, mm-hmm. and then and then we go ahead we go ahead and start while we're there. Mm-hmm. You know, we just start um, the 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 project while I'm there. Usually, we start the second half of that first day because I use the first half for the introductions and explain what we're going to do and everything. Then that second half, we usually we usually can start. And then that second day, I'm I'm there all day, and we're just now we're into it. We're really into it now. Mm-hmm. So then mm-hmm. I come back home. And we continue via Zoom. And at mm-hmm. some point, usually midway of the project, I would fly back out, spend another couple of days with them. You know, just to just to I just kind of like keeping that that mm-hmm. um, face to face personally. You know, I, mm-hmm. I like keeping that kind of contact. So that's usually how it would go. So, how long is a a project generally for a you know company ten to two hundred and fifty employees? Man, you can. It just depends on how many processes we're talking about, and mm-hmm. and, and and what we're doing. If we're if we're flow charting, um, and creating an SOP, standard operating procedure, it 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 might take a year to get all mm-hmm. of that done. It mm-hmm. might get, to to get all of that done. So, thought I had that turned down. So, um, I've gone a year, year and a half, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on the number of processes that we're looking at. Okay. All right. What's the shortest that it could be? Could be six months. Mm-hmm. Once again, just it just depends on if we're doing mm-hmm. if we're just flow charting or if we're flow mm-hmm. charting and creating standard operating procedures and how many processes are we actually looking at. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. That's good. So, so you you can take on clients all around the country. Yep, that makes it fun. <laughs> good, great. That's great. Well, well, uh, I'm wondering. Uh, I'm wondering how to introduce you to clients of mine uh, who. You know, with, with EOS, we, we have a, a three-step process documenter, and mm-hmm. many times that's enough. Uh, you know, just it exactly what we talked about. Make a list of all the core processes in your organization and then mm-hmm. come up with a plan for how are you going to take on every one of those and, you know, tell me how long it's going to take, when you're going to have them done, who's going to do it, and then two or three pages of the process general not you know not turn the bolt two times it's 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 much more uh general about what we're doing then work with the people who are actually doing it to make that process theirs as well as yours then train them train them on the process and then monitor it that's our three steps mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. how we get followed by all mm-hmm and Absolutely. now there's sometimes, sometimes people that, you know, they, they've gone through that simple process that we give them. Uh, it's our three-step process documenter tool and followed by all tool, but they haven't been able to make it work. Mm-hmm. And that's when I want to have people like you, subject matter experts, to say, if you want to go further, I'm not a process expert, but I can introduce you to some. So how how would I introduce you? How would people get introduced to you? We will we will dig deep into the process, right? In in flowchart, the main thing is flowcharting, right? Because you you create a visual. Now they can see it, right? Versus just writing it down. We do this, that, we you can see it now, and and then we'll ask questions because um, processes have logic. Not everything flows, you know, like just straight down. There's, you have the, well, what if this happens? Well, then what do you do? What if it doesn't happen? What do you do? If you're waiting for something, how long are you going to wait before you do something else? You know, um, 
we get into all of that. So we really, really dig deep into the process and create a visual picture of the process so that everybody can see what actually happens. We, we flow it out as you're doing it now. Actually, I, I, I'm, a couple of my clients, my, my two New York clients, I got through an EOS implemented there. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, that's what we're doing with them is flow charting their processes. And, yeah. and, and, and just having a lot of fun and identifying things um, that they can do differently. Uh, just some of the things I already talked about, handoffs, okay? Mm -hmm. Does the person know what the next person needs, right? And you do you have a checklist before, when you hand this off, make sure it has this, 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 and this before you hand it off, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're performing this task, you know, here's, make sure you do this, 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 and this when you're performing this task. So we, what you can tell your clients is we dig deep versus just on the surface. We, we, we get everybody together that touches that process. Everybody that touches it and that's impacted by it, we get all of them together so that we do it one time. You don't, you don't want to have to keep going back to it. You do it one time. And in order to do it right one time, you get everybody together that touches it or is impacted by it so that you can, you can get all the information you need to create the best process. Excellent. Excellent. You don't remember who that uh, EOS implementer was, do you? Um, Savi, what's Savi's last name? Uh, he's out of Brooklyn. Um, I'll send it to you later, Will. Okay. Um, good, good. Well, we all know each other, so we're yeah. we're. It's fun. That's fun. Yeah. Well, that's great. I, I'm I'm going to introduce you to some of my clients, and I'm going to introduce you to some other of the EOS implementers because this is this is very valuable. So, how would people get in touch with Errol Allen if they wanted to talk with you? Well, you can certainly just call um, 281-467-9189 or you can go to my website errolallenconsulting.com and just go to the contact us page and um, reach out there via email. Uh, if you want to okay. email me directly, it's errol at errolallenconsulting.com um, you, you can even schedule you can even schedule a um, visit via my website also. Excellent. What well, was that phone number again? 281-467-9189. Excellent. It's been wonderful, Errol. I really, really enjoyed the conversation. And uh, uh, this is not the last of our conversations. I can promise you that. Well, I appreciate it, man. It's, it's been fun for me. It's always good to see you, talk to you about yeah. what we talk about. And um, I appreciate it. All right, so I want to I want to leave you with uh, uh, the place to download this book. It's okay. uh, I'll show it to you. Okay. Oh yeah, right. it's called Everyone on the Same Page Will Get You What You Want from Your Business. All and right. and All right. you can get it. Uh, you can get it by going to theeveryonebook.com. dot com. Let me write that down. All right. You said be everyone book? No, the, T-H-E, the, the okay. everyone right. book.com. There's two E's in there, the everyone book.com. All right, I'll do it. I'll Just do it. do it, download it, and I'd love to hear your comments on it. Okay, okay, okay. All righty. Well, take care, Errol. This has been wonderful because this is just one more example of how not only in California and not only through COVID, but this is an example of how businesses can thrive. Yes. You've been listening to The Pilgrim on the 405 with Will Christ. To hear more of the programs in this podcast, go to www.willchrist.com.